The convoy started the day off before dawn with fireworks in Enfield, Nova Scotia. Trucker Jody Newell says he decided to join to protest cross-border vaccine mandates targeting his industry. We don't believe that the government should uh, be forcing us to do something we don't want to do that uh, could affect our health. Samantha Monahan helped organize the East Coast leg of the protest. She says they're going to Ottawa with a message. To stop all mandates and to, to just bring everybody together again and, and, and open up Canada and make it free. By late morning, the convoy arrived in Moncton, with hundreds more turning out in support. What is this about? I think it's about people coming together and wanting to live free. Being able to live free. And wanting the to truth. be able to make live free. choices. Tell the truth. And wanting to the Atlantic the Province's truth. Trucking Association disapproves of the protest convoy. Their executive director, Jean-Marc Picard, is worried how it will affect an industry struggling with recruitment. For the last two years, we were seen as uh, heroes and a great industry and uh, you know essential and uh, so hopefully it won't leave too much of a um, you know a negative impact a mark I should say but you know these things uh, can can turn fast and look at how it's escalated and it's not even about trucking anymore. The convoy picked up more supporters just outside Fredericton. They'll continue to Rivière du Loup, Quebec, where they'll stop for the night. The Canadian Trucking Alliance has estimated that as many as 15% of truckers are not vaccinated against COVID-19. The convoy is expected to arrive in Ottawa on Saturday. Suzanne Lapointe, Global News, Moncton. This book is 2 Ezra, chapter 15, and verse 18 through 19. And it reads, For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Makak Wadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to like scattered abroad. Pushing his truth and sincerity. Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Akak, Wadash, Barak, Adam, to Zuquanium, Wa'akim, Wa'akwafium. You know your elders, your brothers, your sisters, the hopeful elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence to make your calling and election sure, and of course, keeping faith in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, in these last days, in these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Pashai, Ba'an Yahshua'Allah. And this be a quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai on a lack of bread will bring forth great tribulation. Now, um, this whole situation going on at the border of, you know, Canada, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm read it right here. It's an article that I pulled up and it's entitled Truckers Across Planet Unite in Convoys, meaning groups against medical tyranny, which tyranny goes with dictatorship. Right, basically going to the mandates of the crack scene, you know, so they're united against you know, so what is protests going on? You know, divisions, uprisings of the people, right? Now these truckers, you know, people don't realize that they play a vital role in American society and society today in, in, in general. You know, of course, Canada, you know, uh, America, you know, <clears throat> these truckers, if they go on strike, if they stop, you know, bringing in the goods, you know, all hell will break loose, man, in a matter of a day or two. You know, uh, there's a saying in the world that people are what? Uh, three mils, no, nine mils away from anarchy, which is only three days. Because it was, what, three days a mil? So nine mils, if you take nine mils away from these Americans, these, these Babylonians, these Egyptians, you know, they're going to what? They're going to bug the hell out. You see? So these truckers are um, protesting, you know, truckers across the whole planet are uniting in convoys against medical tyranny. Right? It's by Tyler Durden. This came out Friday, January 28th, 2022, the year of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah turning up. And he's been turning up, you know, this whole year so far, man. It's only been one month. It's now we're in February. Then Yahweh Bashim Al Shah been turning up. If you're on your watch, if you're paying attention, you know, we can't forget about Salak. You can't forget about what happened in Kazakhstan, doing protests over there. You got, you know, um, they already got the country to camps already over there in Australia. You know, all type of stuff going on in Austria, New Zealand. You see, there's a lot of things going on, earthquakes around the world. Uh, uh, volcanoes erupting, you know, in, in Tonga, you see. And so we're in that time, man. We're close to the end, you see. And people are having a more hard time finding work, you know, the people losing their jobs because of this medical tyranny. 
Now, Lil Willing, they don't tell me a video for me saying that, you know, because, you know, Esau with his medical mis misinformation, right? But I'm a world through the spirit. You know, Lil Willing's video could stay up, right? But guess what? A lack of bread will lead to great tribulation. So a lot of things will be happening simultaneously in these last days. Now, I'm reading some of this article to get some precepts, and I'll be the lesson, right? <clears throat> it says, the 50,000 strong truck drivers heading to um, Ottawa, Ottawa, I believe, Ottawa, which is in Canada, cap Canada's capital. It says, Canada's capital expected to arrive as early as Saturday may break a world record for the longest convoy group called the Freedom Convoy. What do they want to be free from? Medical tyranny. They, they're against the the um the C Uno Nueve mandates. The truck drivers oppose the federal government's cracks, you know, the the, the Vanessa mandates for cross border activity. You know, so go across the border, you gotta be, you know, um Vanessa up. And they're against that, right? It says uh the truck drivers oppose the federal government's cracks mandates for cross border activity and have inspired others world. Why? So it's not just happening in America, Babylon, or Canada. It's happening worldwide, man. Worldwide, because the Heavenly Father is what I bring plagues upon the world. You see? It says, truck drivers from Canada to the United States to Australia to Europe are banded together in protests worldwide against their respective governments. You see? Oh, man, I got to get the precepts. Overreach of public health, especially force, you know, cracks mandates. It says... Freedom convoys from America are expected to join tens of thousands of truckers in um, Ottawa on Saturday to get the government to repeal cross-border uh, C, I almost said it, C, crack scene passports, right? <clears throat> this shows South Carolina, U.S. American truckers heading to, um, up to Ottawa to join the uh, Canadian truckers. You know, I'm going to show that video in the intro, right? Lil' Willie, I'll forget. It says... A Facebook group in Australia called the 2022 Official Convoy in Cambria has more than 66K members and is preparing a convoy to arrive in the capital by January 31st to protest crack scene mandates. Man. You know, let's read a little more. It says, multiple convoys across Europe are being organized at this very moment that will converge on Brussels at an unexpected date. A telegram, a telegram group with more than 14, um, it's like it, 14,000, 14 to 500,000 members, right? Uh, symbols, assemblies, convoys, of course, assembles like it, convoys, of course, the continent to meet in the capital, right? So, yeah, it's getting back, right? Now, I want to read this very quick. Something got lined up, all right? And there's more articles I could bring out. Let me read the titles of them. That'll be it, right? But, you know, it's, it's getting bad, man. You know, they move into secret. You know, some, it says Canadian PM Trudia family moved to a secret location as truckers protest flares up. You know, so it's, 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 it's getting to that point. But I want to read this right quick, right? I looked up, and it's all through the spirit. What happens if truckers stop? Right? It says if trucks were, to, were stopped for a few days, service stations will completely run out of fuel. So forget about your gas. Right, you run out of fuel. ATMs would run out of cash, and banks will be will be unable to process transactions. Supplies of essential food and water would disappear. You see that, man? And a lot of brothers, man, been having dreams lately about famines, about you know inflation, food shortage. And it's another article I want to read through the spirit. Right, it says, and garbage will start piling up in urban and suburban areas, which will cause more pestilence. You see, that will cause diseases, man. If garbage is piling up everywhere, you know, and no one, you know, nothing is going on with it, just stacking up. That's 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 that's, that's um, hazardous, man. That's dangerous, you know. So, <clears throat> through the spirit, man, it's about to get bad out here, you know. And Lord willing, man, shit could pop off 2022 because I'm tired of this place, man. You know. Yeah, so I already read the article. These other articles going to the same thing. What can um, Canada truckers freedom convoy is all about? This one I also had lined up. It says, "Here's why U.S. truckers staging convoy to D.C. will face soaring diesel prices. So prices of the you know um, diesel, which is fuel, gas, are going to skyrocket. You know, that's going to cause more panic and you know uprising. I read this one already. This one says Nova's um, 
Scotia bans gatherings along highway in support of trucker freedom convoy. You know, so it's, it's, we're in that we're time, brothers. You know, we're in that time, you know, because uh, what this could cause is, you know, famine. Like I just read, it could cause famine, it cause, you know, um, spikes and, you know, gas prices, it cause more chaos. It could cause a lot of things, man. You know, people won't be able to get money from out of the ATM. Banks won't be able to, you know, to process transactions. So it's, it's getting to that point. Now, um, I'm going to get the precepts of second address, and it's not going to be something too long. Lord willing, you know, it's all to y'all about streaming at the end of the day. Right, <clears throat> but I wanted to read. Where is it at? This no, no, no. It's this. No, it's not this. Where is it at? That son knows lined up through the spirit, man. Okay, con. I gotta click the link again. All right. <clears throat> so bear with me. I can my find this um this link. Right. Basically going into uh, a food shortage, man. All right. So farmers are already warning about food shortages as well. Let me see if I can find it. All right, so bear with me, Akim Salakia. Fucking commercials. Okay, Khan, so it says Farming Insider warns the coming food shortages are going to be far worse than we're being told. And this came out January 31st, 2022. So this lesson through the spirit is, you know, going to different topics, but basically leading to the same thing, you know, because if the, if the truckers stop and they protest and, you know, they go on strike, so on and so forth because of the crack scene mandates, that will cause famine. That will cause, you know, um, banks to not be able to process transactions. That will cause cash and not be put into ACMs. That will cause, you know, uh, basically shortages on, on fuel and gas. Basically supplies and things the trucks bring to your local neighborhoods your local stores local states wherever the case may be right everything's brought in by these trucks right and going to the source of the food the farmers the farms they're saying yo listen you know food shortages are coming man you know because they got the first the insight firsthand right so in a, in a lot of major cities like new york city you know chicago miami you know uh california you know a lot of like places and states where major cities are in even up there in Toronto, Canada, it's gonna get bad, man. It's gonna get horrible. People are gonna be bugging the fuck out out here, man. Let me read some of this article. So it says, uh, I'm reading from the, the title again. It says, Farming Farming Insider warns the coming food shortages are going to be far worse than we're being told. Uh, this says, The information that I'm about to share with you is extremely alarming, but I have always endeavored to never sugarcoat things for my readers. Right now, there are shortages of certain items in grocery stores across the United States, and that's very true. And even I myself, you know, not too long ago, I had a dream about inflation. I had a dream where, this is a quick little testimony, right? I had a dream where I went to the local corner store with Ishmaelites, you know, running shit like that. And, uh, and I know them, right? I go there a lot, you know, they're familiar with me and all of that. So I went there, and I was um, basically looking for something to buy. I went to buy probably meat or whatever the case and I saw a whole bunch of empty shelves, a lot of empty shelves, and then the shelves that were full, right, with, with, with meat, so with juices and beverages, so on and so forth, bread, the prices were, was ridiculous, man. $100, $400 for a pack of meat. You know, one thing of Sunny D, you know, like orange juice, it was like $20, man. I was like, what the fuck is going on in here? I was like, yo, I was like, yo, God, you know, you know, you know, you grew up in, um, you're from New York City, you know, they call the Ishmaelites ox, right? Yo, I, I was like, yo, I, what, you know, why, why the prices like this? They was like, he, he, you know, he shrugged the shoulders. I don't know, you know, it's the American government. <laughs> Sound like that, he said, you know. He's like, I don't know, prices going up, you know. He's just a government. Sound like that. I was like, damn. The guy just walked out the store. I think I said something else. I can't remember, though. So I, the dream shortly after that ended. But I remember the dream was, like, it was dark. I don't know if it was just nighttime, but it was dark, probably eerie. You know, I can't fully remember everything. But th the main point was the prices was crazy. Man. And, and the shows was empty. Right. So it says, uh, and food supplies have gotten very tight all, all over the globe. I have repeatedly warned that this is just the beginning, but I didn't realize how dire things have already gotten until I received an email from a farming farming insider that um, I have corresponded with over the years. I asked him if I could pu publicly share some of the information that he was sharing with me. And he said that will be OK as long as I kept his name out of it. Right. So he just he just wanted his name out of it. He want to be mentioned, man. 
right? He says what? <clears throat> According to this farming insider, dramatically increased costs for fertilizer will make it impossible for many farmers to profit profitable um, you profitably plant corn this year. The following is an ex uh, excerpt from an email that he recently sent me. Things for 2022 are interesting and scary. Input costs for things like fertilizer, liquid nitrogen, and seeds are like triple and quadruple the oil, the oil prices. It will not be profitable to plant this year. Let me repeat, the economics will not work. Our plan is to drop about 700 acres of corn off to convert the so to soybeans, right? It says, um, they use less fertilizer and we also have chicken manure from, from that operation. Guess what? We are not the only ones with those plans already. There's a shortage of short soybean seeds. So we um, will see how that will work out. The way I see it, there'll be a major grain shortage later in the year, especially with corn. I mean, we are small with that. What about these people in the Midwest who have 10,000 acres of corn? This will not be good. You know, now... <laughs> Yeah, this is gonna get bad, man. It's gonna get it's gonna get hard, man. You know, it's gonna be some hardships, tribulations. You know, that's what tribulation going into, man. Hardships. Right? And this famine, this lack of bread, you know, lack of food, you know, lack of corn, you know, soybean oil, you know, that's gonna cause people to bug the fuck out. Truckers not bringing in shit. People gonna bug out, man. You see? So uh I'm not gonna read the entire article. I'm gonna link it, Lil Willen. I remember to link this specific article in the description box below. <clears throat> so from there, I wanna get some more, I wanna get some precepts, man. You know, let's get these precepts. Let's get Mark 13. Then I'm gonna go back to second address and, you know, if anything else pop up, Lil Willen, I'll get that as well. Right? So Mark 13 in verse, what I want, seven. And when you shall hear wars and rumors of wars, and we hear that right now, Russia, Ukraine, you know, Babylon, which is America, you know, and Russia, Iran and Israel, North Korea and you know, America, you know, China, America, you see, <clears throat> America and Iran, right? But it's the main focus right now is thing going over there in Russia, you know, Russia getting ready to invade Ukraine. They sent like, what, 8,500 troops over there, so on and so forth, getting ready to sound like that, you know, oh, Iran getting ready to get nuclear weapons and, and nuclear arsenal, you know, whether they got it or not already, because they probably already got that shit. You see, because if I'm not mistaken, they're allies with Russia, Gog and Magog, right? Now, Iran is what the Persians. So nation against nation, which is race wars, and kingdom against kingdom, which oh no, I skipped Slaki, I skipped the whole thing, right? Slaki, I can. It says, when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, which we're hearing about, be not troubled. So this that don't trouble us, and that's spiritual too, because the elder apostle Hart mentioned how, you know, um, the end not gonna come, not yet. You know, he said the end not gonna happen yet. World three not gonna pop off yet until what? Until the um, karagma is made mandatory, man. You see that? So that's spiritual, man. Cause you know, like our Lord Yahusha said the same thing right here. Don't be troubled. When you hear these wars, rumors of war, Ukraine, Russia, and all of that, don't be troubled by that. It's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of things that, that gotta happen yet. You know, that must happen. It says, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. So we see kingdom against kingdom going on right now. And it says in earthquakes in diverse places, right? And there's been a lot of earthquakes happening worldwide. It says, and there shall be famines. What is famine? The word famine is hungry or hunger. The Google definition says what? An extreme scarcity of food and water, right? And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows, right? So... That's going to lead to pain, tribulation, sorrows, hardships, those famines, those those nation rise against nation, race wars, you know, the different protests and riots. Let's get, you know, second edges now. Let's get it. Second edges 15. And I'm going to start at verse <clears throat> one. Behold, speak down the ears of my people, the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, save the Lord and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of dumb trouble thee that speak against thee, right? So the unbelief, those that don't believe, man. We're not going to let that, you know, trouble us, man. Right? Those that speak against us, come against us, scoff. We don't give a damn about you, motherfuckers, man. You know? We're going to keep pushing this word. Verse 4. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. If you don't believe in how Bashim Yahweh Shai, you will get put to death, man. You're going to die in your unfaithfulness, man. If you don't believe in his truth. 
It says, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, is bringing what? Plagues upon the world. All the world, man. That's why I said them truckers are um, having that convoy of a medical tyranny worldwide. Europe, Australia, Babylon, which is America, Canada, right? The Lord's having to bring plagues upon all the world. And these truckers, they strike, man. That's going to cause damage. It's going to be a domino effect. It says the sword, famine, death, and destruction. All that's coming upon the earth. Why? For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And the hurtful works are fulfilled. So you wicked mouth, yo, you wicked people, man. Wickedness. Esau, Edom, the elites on down. You know, wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And guess what? Your hurtful works are fulfilled now. The Lord said what? He would um, no more hold his tongue concerning your wickedness. I'm slack you. It's right here. Verse 7. And I was also thinking about Revelation 18, verse, uh, what's that, 5? For her sins, Babylon the grave, reaching to the heavens. Right? And the Lord going to reward her double according to her works. But let's read verse 7 right here. Second Ezra 15, verse 7. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things, in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cry unto me, and the souls of the just complain continue. Who's that? Who's the souls of the just? The elect. The elect. Scripture so say what? Give him um, neither rest, day nor night, till he establish and make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. What does Ezekiel 9, the ninth chapter say? You know, uh, set a mark with Thawa, meaning what? Exempt from judgment upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. So the souls of the just complain continually, man. You know, the whole full lex on what I was on passing on down, but labor for decades. We're complaining, man. We're sighing and we're crying. We, we want to get the fuck up out of here, man. You know, and the Lord is going to show in the dates for the elect's sake, man. We got to get out of here. All these mandates and shit, man. You know? <clears throat> Soon, he's still going to bring out them camps. He's going to start putting people in them camps and he's doing over there in Australia, man. Right? And may the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, be with those brothers in Australia that are pushing his word. And actually, they still teaching. You know, all that going on over there, man. So, hey. Right? The family of the word is going to happen very soon as well. But it says, Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cry unto me, and the souls that are just complain continually. And therefore, say the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Right? So this is modern day Egypt, America, Babylon, the Greek. Look up the back of the dollar bill. Right? It's self-explanatory. This place is known as what? In the relation of 11 and verse 8. Uh, and their dead bodies shall lie in that great city, which is Sodom and Egypt. Roughly paraphrasing it, right? So this is Egypt again. This is Egypt 2.0. So the Lord going to bring these plagues again. The same plagues he brought to ancient Egypt, you know, he going to bring to America. It says, and will destroy all the land thereof. Ultimately, this whole land will be destroyed by fire. Verse 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be cemented with the plague and punishment that heavenly father shall bring upon it. They, it says, they that till the ground shall mourn. Farmers. Farmers. That is read the article, man. They that till the ground shall mourn. For their seed shall fail. Did I just not read that, man? In the article, that's happening right now, man. As we speak, as we speak, this is happening, right? So the words are hopping off these pages. The prophecy is popping off. It's, it's speaking, man. You know? They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting hell with the, and with the fearful consolation. It says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein, meaning destruction to the world and those that dwell in it. For the sword and the destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another. Race wars. And swords in their hands, and while they sword is what the gun. For there shall be sedition, which is what? Uh incitement or speech conducting basically to um, rise against an established monarch or government. Right? And that's happening right now. <clears throat> like I was reading the articles, man. Over there in Canada, different borders, so on and so forth, man. You know, they did protest against what the crack scene mandates. So it says, uh, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. Who's the modern day kings and princes? The government, right? Of course, the elites on down to the government, police, whatever the case, military. You know, those are the modern day kings and princes. The authority, I'd rather say that. The authority. And people are not giving a fuck about it, man. They say, I don't care. I do not care. And I've read that earlier today, you know, early in this lesson, you know, in, in the articles, man. 
and the course of their action shall stand in their in their power. So they're gonna take madness at their own hands. That's what these truckers are doing. Fifty thousand deep worldwide, man, coming together, and he, man, they going they protesting. Basically, they going on strike. Basically, There's, if they got time to protest, they're not breaking in the supplies and goods. You see, until they lift them crack scene mandates, which you know Esau ain't gonna do it. See, because he want chaos, right? He want chaos, man. You know, and certain I'll say you know cross border, so on and so forth. Crack scene mandates because for certain local businesses and states, it's not fully mandated yet. You know. <clears throat> but man, New York City, man, is, is fucking bad. Right? But it says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Which what? Quarantine. Checkpoints. Right? For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the house shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Right? A man shall have no petty pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy his house. His sorry, but shall destroy their house with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. And for great tribulation, so guess what? A lack of bread is, is among us, man. Great tribulation is coming upon the earth. You see? So, man, these people, man. It's time for you, Jake, something to get right. Or you're going to get put to death, man. It's that, it's that simple, man. And Lord willing, we make it. You know? Starting with the elders, the apostles, the bishops of Great Millstone. You know, and down to the brothers in Great Millstone. And brothers, you know, and amongst the other different camps that teach in sound doctrine. I may not be in Great Millstone, but teaching the same doctrine. See, teaching the truth, you know, 100%, man. In sincerity, of course. You know, I pray for all you brothers, man, for real. You know, I pray for all you brothers, man. Brothers in my camp, you know, through the Spirit of Papiah Bashim Al Shai, which a camp is a body of brothers, you know, that's church. Lord willing, the Lord have, man, Lord willing, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Deliver us, have mercy upon us, and forgive us for our sins, man. And we could we could get about out of this place. And Lord willing, he be with us, man. And the Lord shows that he's with us, man. He give us signs, you know. He shows us chariots, give us dreams, man. Us, us getting us getting spiritual powers, us getting delivered out of different situations. You know, in real life, we look, we see chariots and they vanish. You know, they're around us, the angels are around us, man. You see that? Brother seeing 144 every single day. Randomly, this brother seeing 144, 144, you know, 444, which is that's mercy right there, man. The Lord is saying, yo, keep doing what you're doing. You know, those are all spiritual signs, man. So I pray for all you brothers, man. You sincere brothers. All right. Uh, let's, let's finish this lesson off through the spirit. Let's get second Edris chapter 16 and verse 17. Woe is me. Woe is me. Who delivered me in those days? That's how bad it's going to be, man. Our forefather, the prophet Ezra, said, what? Who will deliver me in those days, man? That's how bad it is going to be. But you know, Yahweh Bashim is going to deliver him. And that proves reincarnation right there. All right? Because he prophesied about a future event, which is the, the, the time we're in right now. Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mourning. So this is the beginning, man. <laughs> this is just the beginning. And you got people folding, you know? That's like, you know, you go into a boxing match. They just ring the bell. And you throwing in the towel, man. You giving up. You tapping now already. When an MMA match, when they ring the bell, you just they grab you at one sec, you tap out. They even do no pressure yet. They even put you in the fucking um arm bar yet. As soon as they get a grip on your arm, you tapping out. These just the beginning of sorrows, man. People, you know, tapping out, man. Why? Cause they they weak. Motherfuckers is weak, man. You know? That's why we gotta continue to pray for strength. We need strength. You know? We need, you know, courage. We need bravery. We need uh uh confidence in your house now shy. People out here, man, they don't got it, man. They don't got it. And guess what? Noah's, Noah's keeping us stable. Isaiah 33 and verse 6. For wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times. And those times are beginning right now, man. It's, it's been beginning 2,000 years ago, man. When the Lord came on the scene, I was beginning the last days when the Lord came on the scene. So how much more, how much closer do we think, um, how much closer to the end do you think we are um, today? Very close. So we need strength. We need stability. You know, we need faith. You know, these are the beginning. So let's end it off. So it says the beginning of sorrows and great mourners, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? You see? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Now you look at the word tribulation, which I'm gonna bring out right quick. Then I'm gonna go back to that and end the lesson off through the spirit. Tribulation in Google says what? A cause of great trouble or suffering. It says a state of great trouble or suffering, right? It says trouble. It says worry. It says anxiety, burden, affliction, ordeal, trial, adversity, hardship, tragedy, trauma, 
reverse setbacks. You know, it says difficulty, problem, issues, misfortune, bad luck, mishaps, right? Suffering, distress, misery, man. I go on and on. It says, whoa, grief, pain, anguish, agony, heartache, misadventure, right? Pain, travails, right? So hassle, right? So lucky. But yeah, man, you know, that's the time we, we in, man. You know, and we got to grit up our loins like a man and endure through it all, man. Because guess what? All greatness comes from suffering. Let's end this lesson off. Second and 16 verse 19 again. Behold, the, this is behold famine and plague, tribulation, and anguish are seen as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. Nor always be mindful of the scourges. They're not even mindful of what's going on. Behold, victory shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. So right now, people think they're in a good case, right? A lot of people that took the Vanessa, they think they're in a good case, man. But guess what? Evils are growing upon the earth. You know, they had the whole thing. Oh, everything. We're going to go back to that normal. Everything go back to normal. There is no new. There's, there's no normal, man. They want a new normal, which is what? The new world order. That's what they want. So evils are growing upon the earth as we speak, man. Sword, wars is about to pop off, famine, lack of bread, food shortages, farmers are, you know, inside farming, you know, people are bringing it out, man, insiders, and great confusion, man. People are out here confused. I don't know what the fuck is happening. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish, meaning die of famine. That's a terrible way to go out. Lamentations of the fourth chapter. And the other that escaped the hunger shall the sword destroy. And the dead shall be cast out as dung. And there shall be no man come to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. So it can be dead bodies everywhere very soon, man. And oh, but the, the, I may do a, a separate lesson going to this, man. You know, the new t TV show on Netflix called what? Uh, All of Us Are Dead. <laughs> you see? And it's about what? You know, basically zombies, night crawlers, whatever you want to call them. And they got infected with a, you know, with a, with a V. You know, not the Vanessa, but, you know, um, a V-I-R-U-S. They got infected with that. You see that? And basically, it's like a rage, you know, virus, basically. I would just say it. You know, it's a rage virus. And he's biting people. in it. Oh, Amazon Web Services brought that out. Oh, the CDC brought out a pamphlet of how to survive a zombie apocalypse. You know, and like I just mentioned, Amazon Web Services talked about a, a transmitted disease uh, via bites, man. You saw probably like, man, I gotta take this video down now. You know? But hey man, we almost said end. So let's end it off. We get second chapter 16. One of my favorite precepts to read, you know, is verse uh 74. Verse 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. So guess what? When all that has happened in the world, it's gonna be known who Yahweh Bashim Al Shah is dealing with, man. It says, Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as a gold in the fire. Hear ye my beloved, save the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Heavenly Father is your guide, and the God of them will keep my commandments and precepts, save the Lord power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquity lift up themselves. So Yahweh Bashim al Shai will deliver us, man. He will believe that, have faith in that. No matter how bad it gets, man, believe on your power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. With that, I'm going to say, um, call Lime La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Akak Kudash, Dabuana said, Elders and Apostles of Great Millstone, peace and salutations, like Scott of the Broad, pushing his truth in sincerity. With that, I'm going to say, Shalom, Wa Ba Ba Ba, Shalom.